So today we're gonna talk a little bit about how we can better understand our teens. We're gonna talk a little bit about how trauma affects our teens' brains and how the responses could probably display that. We're gonna then talk about some practical tips on how we can better understand them by connecting and listening, empowering their choice, and how this can overall improve our struggling teen relationship. So now we wanna talk about trauma on the brain. So when a teen or a child experiences a threat, that then is interpreted in the brain as survival, right? So then their survival response, what we commonly call fight, flight, freeze, maybe even hide, this response is then really their body on emotional autopilot. So this is where we can see a multitude of behaviors, dysregulation, maybe an emotional outburst, aggression, anger, or maybe they're completely withdrawn. So this is what it looks like when their brain has gone through trauma. And when that has been over and over again, we then are, are left with behaviors that we might not understand. We have to remember that the behavior is just a surface level and that we really need to look beyond. And that's why it's super important for us to create safe and a loving environment for them to feel safe to kind of bring those guards down so they can heal that trauma because brain is neuroplastic. It's healable and it's beautiful. So we have to give them just the space to be able to do that. And sometimes that takes time. So when a child has been through trauma, they're a teen moving through the adolescent stage, we'll see all of those different reactions. And it's really important, like I said, to have a safe and stable environment for them. If a child or a teen is feeling unsafe, you're gonna get all the reactions and the behaviors that you can see that you might not understand. And we wanna remember that those aren't malicious. They aren't doing them to be mean or rude. This is the reaction that their brain is on the survival, survival mode. So in understanding this emotional autopilot that they're on, we wanna take a step back, understand their story, understand their trauma on the brain. So now some practical tips on how we can better understand our teens. So step number one, we wanna understand, we wanna understand that trauma, understand their story and how it's affected them. Number two, we wanna connect and listen. We wanna ask ourselves, what are they trying to tell us? What are their verbal and nonverbal cues or ways of communication that are maybe reactions to that trauma? So we wanna sit, connect, and listen to what they have to say and the way that they're saying it. We also want to sit and meet them where they are. So whatever they're giving us, we wanna meet them there. We wanna show interest in their interests. And the last tip is to empower their choice with appropriate independence. So we wanna give them space to fail in a safe space. And we want to give them choices, give them options, because ultimately during this stage, right, they're gaining their independence, they're developing their identity, and we wanna make sure our home and our, our person is safe for them, our relationship. And you do that again with the other steps. So overall, we wanna take these three steps that we talked about today and how we can better understand our teens, right? So step number one, we want to understand, seek to know their story, understand trauma on the brain. We wanna connect and listen to what they're giving us and how they're communicating, what they're trying to say. Understand that those behaviors are just surface level for what's really going on. And then step three, we wanna empower their choice. We want to give them and foster that appropriate independence and autonomy. We want to allow them to fail in a safe environment. And this is the way that we've, we've been designed to really be known and understood, right? This is what um, we each experience a longing for. And in Mark 12, it actually talks about loving our neighbor. That's one of a super important topic that we are taught over and over again. And what that looks like is all of these steps, right? Understanding somebody's story, connecting and listening, and empowering their choice in a relationship, right? And so if you have any questions or you have a struggling teen that you're working with or caring for, know that the Epic team is ready to help. We wanna walk through this with you and journey and partner alongside what it looks like to better understand our teens.